Right, what's going on boys and girls? We're here with another video, but this time we're going to be looking at the best apps for the Pine Phone. Specifically Ubuntu Touch and the best apps that I feel are on the App Store currently, or the Open Store, quote unquote. Uh, so, yeah, let's roll into it. All right, so these are kind of going to run across the board as far as different applications. There's no specific things that I'm looking for. These are just apps that fill a niche that I would need to go from this to this. And that's really what I'm looking at. And that's how I'm looking at this and the viability of it. And the only way to have a viable knowledge base to go from is to actually look, use, and try. Um, but instead of, you know, trying to do some crappy overhead of like seeing the apps run, I just want you guys to see where you, you can find these in the open store using Ubuntu Touch for the Pine phone. So the first one up, we have My Finance. Now, this one is pretty simplistic. It's not like really complicated, but it's pretty in depth for what you can do. Um, this reminds me a lot of home bank, the Linux desktop or pretty much any desktop. So it's a nice financial tracker. If that is what you need. I know for me, that's how I have to operate when I do these kind of things. So seeing that on the Ubuntu touch, uh, or the Ubi ports open store is really nice to see. And next up, some people love their markdown. So there was actually a markdown editor on ubuntu touch and that is crazy mark i only use markdown mostly for when i do show notes so i don't really need markdown very often but it's cool to have and i do love having the ability to use markdown though on my phone definitely cool next up really really simplistic uh to do list now this is not kind of my preferred way of doing to-do list i'm more of an eisenhower uh, matrix kind of way of do thought processing so this is the closest i've been able to use and kind of categorize stuff in order to do it for me so really simplistic really nice um the fact that it's got a dark theme which for me is an uber must because all the bright lights and like the whites and stuff just they hit my eyes in a different way and like changing hues and stuff doesn't uh, help so this one is actually really nice i really enjoy this as far as traditional to-do lists you know you have your different categories here you can auto import tasks uh, pending tasks and stuff so it's just a really nice clean simple to-do list next up we all listen to music well here's an unofficial client for radar record radio stations um this focuses mostly on like electronica and like electronic music and dance music and that kind of stuff but they also do have a few different uh genres as well um they're they're looking to kind of expand their musical stuff so uh it's actually a really nice um it's not a hundred percent like spotify replacement like you, you kind of really got to be into that genre of music but for me like when i'm driving or when i'm lo looking for things to listen to the thing i really care about is just having good noise not annoying you know dealing with other drivers crap so that is definitely something i really like about this and again it's just the thing I love about some of the Ubuntu chat stuff is it just feels clean and it gives you, but it gives you options that are kind of upfront, but not buried, you know, whereas Android doesn't always do that or it gives you way too many and it's just kind of annoying. This doesn't do that. That's what I really love about Ubuntu touch. Um, so there's your like Spotify type replacement if you're looking for that. So pure map slim is actually a slim down version of pure maps, ironically. Um, but what it does is it uses, I believe, MapQuest, and it's just a little nice, uh, it's a nice GPS app for Ubuntu Touch. Um, hit or miss with it, with its working um, on some stuff. That's something I've come across on most of the apps, though, um, as far as, like, navigation apps, and that's mostly because of 
uh, GPS functionality more in the phone than so much like they're not capable. Which brings us to UNAV, which the cool thing with this is, you know, if you want to go 100% GPL and Libre Power projects, here you go. It's a nice little app. Uh, you know, it's OpenStreetMap powered, online, offline. This is probably going to be the one that most people tell you to use. Um, what I will say is if you live more rural areas, OpenStreetMap might not quite work for you. More population dense areas, more than likely, it'll be perfectly fine though. So one of the biggest apps I need personally though, for me is Telegram. And there are web clients and web apps for Telegram, but there's a native app and it's really, really good. And this is Teleports. You know, I love this app. They, the way they go about <laughs> fixing some of the limitations is kind of cool. Uh, one of the things is, you know, voice, voice notes and uh, voice messages. They're set across as a file now, like as far as the Ubuntu experience, it's shown as a file as opposed to um, just like in thread. So it'll open up a media player and drop you back into Telegram after you exit out. So it's a, it's a nice little little thing, but, you know, kind of working around some of the, the limitations of Telegram or, you know, Ubuntu Touch, I'm not really sure, but it's really cool. Uh, I really like it. I, there's a lot of swipe gestures on each individual conversation. Also cool. Definitely like that. Next up, we have uh, email client. So most people are going to like, oh, well, you know, web. Well, not everyone wants to deal with 20 different web pages for web-based email. So Deco2 is supposedly experimental. What I've had to do is for Gmail stuff specifically is you have to, especially if you have two-factor authentication, you have to enable app-specific passwords for it. So, and not just your generic Gmail login stuff. So that that's the biggest thing right there. But as far as like its actual usage, I love this thing. Uh, I use this for everything that I can possibly use it for. You know, and then this is all the server, you know, Google, iCloud, Outlook, Yahoo, IMAP, POP3, SMTP. So it's just a nice app, well-designed, definitely worth, I think, paying for. Um, there, There's a lot of apps that will ask you to donate, and I highly recommend that you do. Speaking of an app that asks you to donate, ebook readers. You know, we, we have Calibra and all the other stuff. If you want a good ebook reader on Ubuntu Touch, this is the one to get you. Storm, 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 I'm probably butchering the name, but you know, hey, whatever. Uh, this thing I love because I have a lot of uh, e EPUB books, PDFs, etc. that I bought through like Humble Bundle and stuff that I want to take on the go and on my phone that aren't tied to like Amazon and all the other stuff. And the nice thing with that is this allows me to do that on an Ubuntu touch phone. And the interface is actually really nice. As you can tell, like one thing you guys will constantly hear me rave about is I do love the interface, the way the selections are done, etc. when it comes to Ubuntu touch. So next up we have Podbird. Podbird is your podcast manager. It is like the hands down, no questions asked, the one to get on Ubuntu touch. Um, I use this for all my DL stuff. I use this for Linux for everyone, all my Linux related content that I listen to podcast wise, because I'm not gonna lie. There's not a lot of podcasts that I listen to besides any of the Linux stuff because, uh, not a lot of it interests me the generic tech ones. Uh, there's a few Star Trek ones that interest me and what have you, but the UI, like everything else is just nice and clean. It's not overly complicated. You can download stuff. It just works. And I loved it. And next up, you want to get deeper into tweaking your device. I have this particular one for one particular reason. The only reason really for me is it enables a system-wide dark mode that I personally need. Uh, this is obviously Ubuntu Touch Tweak Tool. But this has so many things you can 
you know, change, um, your favorite apps, your usage mode, launcher indicators, you know, edge sensitivity, all this stuff, uh, it, it, like it goes on and on, um, click packages, etc. Like this is definitely, if you're going to run Ubuntu touch to me, this is like a must have. And that is really where it boils down. So these are just some of the apps that you can get on the Ubuntu Touch open store, but I would highly recommend exploring the store. There are some other great apps. I did not use them. I don't need them. These are specifically really tailored to general use of what I would need in order to switch. So there you guys go. Let me know what some of your favorite apps are, be it web apps, native apps, etc. You guys know what to do. I'll catch you on the flip. Peace.